Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> Welcome to preparation of uh, July series this year. So, first topic which we'll be discussing today is uh, physical quantities, units, and measurements. So, I'll be sharing some presentation with you. Okay, so what I have included in this chapter, I said, let me tell you one thing that uh, starting topics maybe <clears throat> look easier to you because you have been covering those topics for the last three years and you have covered those topics and reviewed those topics many times. So these topics may look easier and the share of these topics means the number of questions on these topics in paper two are limited. But when we talk about paper one, we get a good percentage of these topics in paper one. So for example, if I compare a topic, uh, physical quantities and uh, or mass variant density or light or electricity, so you may be getting lower uh, percentage of a uh, uh, number of questions of the data topics like electricity and light. But when we look at paper one, so you'll be getting a good percentage of uh, number of questions from mass and density and physical quantities also. So <clears throat> we have to go through these topics in these series. We'll have a quick review and then we'll be <clears throat> discussing some possible questions and I'll be sharing a very detailed possible questions, topical possible questions worksheet with you in the uh, comments box. Okay, so if we go through the uh, concept map, so what do we have here? At first, <clears throat> there are seven basic quantities and we discuss five of them. So mass, temperature, electric current, amount of substance, luminous intensity. So what we'll be discussing is length, mass, time, temperature, and electric current. We'll be discussing five of them. Amount of substance and luminous intensity will not be discussing in the syllabus. So in measurement of length, we discuss a number of instruments, tape measure or measuring tape or retractable tape, meter rule, vernier caliper, micrometer screw gauge. So vernier caliper is not included in our syllabus. We will not be uh, reading it, but we can discuss it for the range of measurements which lie in its, uh, in its capacity. Then we'll be discussing time. Um, time is measured through pendulums, clocks, stopwatches, and uh, for mass measurement, we use a digital uh, measuring instrument. We'll be discussing that in detail in, in mass or density chapter, and then for uh, there is a, a good discussion of uh, measuring cylinder and uh, okay so we'll be discussing these topics so first of all i'll let you uh, tell about this uh, measurement of length because i have got a, got a table here so retractable tape any measurement estimated measurement which is more than a meter can be measured by the tape measure or retractable tape or measuring tape, or in some times you can use a trundle wheel also. Then any measurement till one meter means within one meter. So that will be done by the meter rule. Or if it is less than a half meter, then half meter rule will be suggested for that. But you need to look at one thing that minimum measurement which can be taken through a meter rule or a tape measure that is one millimeter or 0 0.1 centimeters. And for vernier caliper, you can divide it by 10. Means vernier caliper's minimum measurement will be 0 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 centimeters. And for micrometer, that will be further divided by 10. So <clears throat> minimum measurement measured by a micrometer will be 0 0.01 millimeter or 0 0.001 centimeter. And then we'll be discussing the ranges also. Uh, we discussed for the tape measure, any measurement more than a meter. And uh, we'll be using the tape measure for that. Any measurement less than a meter, that will be meter rule, half, uh, less than a half meter, half meter rule. And within 10 centimeters, we'll be using a vernier caliper. And within 
two centimeters or 2.5 centimeters that will be a micrometer. Okay, so moving on. Types of questions which you are getting is one is from quantities and units. You may be asked about the scalars and vectors quantities and what are the units of those quantities, and you can be asked about their units. Then instrument selection, and then reading the instrument for a meter rule or a micrometer. Then scalars and vector quantities. You can be asked about the vector addition also. You may be given a diagram, and you will be asked if the <clears throat> vector quantities have been adding, added added properly. There is one more thing. Uh, there is an increased effort in this paper one preparation. When you get a question from this factor addition in paper two, you have the privilege and you have the option to use a vector triangle means head to tail rule or a parallelogram method. But in this, you can be asked about both. So if you have done only one method for vector addition, you should be practicing both now. As a, you will you won't be drawing in this paper one, but you will be opting the right answer. So you must be clear about the process of adding vectors in parallelogram and in vector triangle method and finding the result. Okay, first of all, uh, we'll be going for a quick revision because we have limited time. Micrometer, so. And we uh, will not be going into the detail of this construction, but we have a main scale here and we have a circular scale here. And this is the space where we hold the object and there is a lock here with which we lock the reading and we remove the ratchet to uh, hold the object. Okay, so the so method to read a micrometer is we just hold the object in it and then uh, we'll be looking at the main scale. Main scale gives us the last reading which we can see on that main scale. So here you can see we have the main scale in millimeters and every millimeter is further divided in two. So we have 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3, 4 and 5 millimeters. So the last reading which we can see is 5.5 millimeters. So that is our sleeve reading or main scale reading. That is in centimeters that will be 0 0.55 centimeters and in millimeters that will be 5.5 millimeters. And then we'll be looking at the circular scale or the thimble reading. That is 10, 11, 12th line is coinciding with the main scale. So 12 multiplied by the uh, least count or the minimum reading which can be read from this uh, micrometer. So that is in centimeters that will be 12 into 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and for millimeter that will be 0 0.01. So in centimeters that is 0 0.012 centimeters, and final reading will be 0 0.562 centimeters, or millimeters that will be 5.62 millimeters. Okay? I will not be looking at the zero error <coughs> in this case, but you may be asked about uh, uh, measuring precisely the micrometer. So I hope there is a question added in the worksheet related to precise measurement. So you can be asked, asked about the including a zero, but not reading it because that will require a couple of diagrams. Okay, moving on. Then we'll be discussing this uh, vector addition. So I'm not going into the detail of uh, quantities and the units because that's the easier part. And, uh, about uh, the instruments like a meter group. So that's much easier. You can do that yourself. Okay, vector addition at first representing a vector. Like here we have two vectors, six newtons and four newton vectors drawn at 45 degrees angle to each other. And uh, if we are using a parallelogram method to add these vectors, so those two vectors will be uh, drawn with their tails starting from a point, originating from a point. And then the rest of the parallelogram will be completed uh, with the principle that opposite sides are parallel and equal. 
and then the principal diagonal of the parallel gram gives the resultant vector, which is denoted by a double arrow. So you can identify this uh, parallel gram method and its correct diagonal. So remember the basic rule that both the vectors are originating from a single point. In vector triangle method, we draw two vectors, but the vectors are drawn in such a way that the second vector is drawn after the first vector. So you can see here that uh, this vector B is drawn, tail of B is originating from the head of vector A, and then from the starting point to the ending point. So two vectors drawn one after the other, and then from the starting point, we have a double arrow to the head of the last vector. So that's a resultant vector. So that's, that is the basic difference between parallelogram and vector triangle method. So you can identify the difference in this one. Now you can have one more question. This is the resultant being shown here. There is one more case in which we can have a balanced force. For example, <coughs> this resultant tells us that if these forces were being applied on an object, so that object will be moving in the direction of the resultant force. But it can be a case where object is not moving, it's in equilibrium. So whatever the resultant is, opposite force will be equal and opposite force of the resultant vector will be applied on that object. So that object will remain equal. So I'll be discussing that example in uh, practice questions. Okay. Now, first MCQ four students link the quantities on left with their units on right. So option A, frequency is being given by hertz, acceleration in meters per second, latitude in joules, and power in watts. So that seems correct. So there can be this strategy in uh, MCQs that uh, first MCQ may seem right, but that can be a deceiving one. So you have to go through all the options, even if it looks right, that will be a bit of practice. So, which set of quantities are all vectors? Acceleration is written by here. First seems to be correct one, but we need to go through quantity first. The diameter length of a wire approximately 50 centimeters length are measuring, measured as precisely as possible. What are the best instruments to use? So, length is 50 centimeters, so we'll be using a rule for that. And for, uh, that's a thin wire, so we'll be using a micrometer for that. Diagram shows a micrometer scale. Which reading is shown? <clears throat> so last reading which you can see here is 567.5 millimeters and 14 into 0 0.1, 7.5 plus 0 0.14. So that is, think, but, 7.5 into 0 .7 0.7.5 plus 0 0.14. So that will be giving us 7.64. So I'll be showing that again. Okay. Micrometers used to measure the diameter. What is done to obtain an accurate answer? Find the reading and add or subtract zero error. Make the micrometer horizontal. It doesn't make a difference. Subtract the fix. Scale reading from rotating scale reading, so it's not subtracted. Subtract the rotating, so that's also not done. So, option A. Okay, now, now we have here a simple pendulum. Okay, oscillation of a swinging pendulum occurs when the bob moves from X to Y and back to X again. Using a stopwatch, which would be the most accurate way to measure the time for one oscillation of the pendulum. Time for 20 oscillations and multiplied by 20, that's not done. Time 20 oscillations and divide by 20, so that's the actual method of measuring the time period. So we can also do it for one oscillation, which is uh, suggested in option C, but there is a problem of uh, human reaction time because oscillation time is very small. That's almost a second. And human reaction time can cause a large percentage of error. So that's why we time for 20 oscillations and then divide by divide that time term by 24 time period of a single pendulum. What is the size of the resultant force? So we have two vectors here, three and four newtons, which are perpendicular to each other. So I hope you can do this match. Uh, 
related to the right angle triangle. So resultant vector, which will be completed in a triangle here, resultant vector will be five newtons. Okay, forces of 25, 40 newtons act on an object in the direction shown, 25 and 40 newtons, which arrow shows the uh, direction. So if I add these vectors in the way which are given here, so I can complete the parallelogram. So that will be like, uh, parallelogram will be completed like this. So this will be the resultant vector option B. Okay, here we have a set of diagrams. The diagram shows some quantities of these two vectors. This diagram shows the resultant of these two vectors. So first of all, identify which method is being used here. So that seems to be the, uh, the option A. Both the vectors are drawn one after the other, but then the resultant vector is not drawn correctly. In option B, both the vectors and this is not chosen correctly. Option B seems to be the right, right answer that is using parallelogram method. Both the vectors are drawn in such a way that their tails are originating from a single point and then principal diagonal is given the resultant vector. Okay. So that will be all for this uh, uh, physical quantities, units and measurements. We'll have a detailed worksheet that will be having almost more than 100 MCQs and we'll be practicing practicing almost every aspect of this chapter. I'll be sharing that in the comment. You will have to go to the link and you'll have to uh, like, subscribe and do comment if you have any questions uh, for the uh, after solving the worksheet. Thank you.